course, on the Jeep, and I thought I would take you along for my uh, maiden voyage off-road on a Honda Ruckus factory stock, everything, no modifications whatsoever. So um, there's a logging road that I'm on here. This part isn't too bad. It's pretty good shape, uh, but it's really gone to pieces over the years. Uh, years ago, I could, you could get like a car down this, like just a regular car. And then uh, a few years later, you know, maybe three or four, uh, two or three years ago, you could get a, a reasonably good uh, four-wheel drive down it. And now you need an exceptional four-wheel drive to get down this with really good clearance because there's some brutal ruts. Um, and this is a place I love to come to, to hunt and fish uh, and camp out and stuff like that. It's just uh, what they call crown land, you know. For, in Canada, there's land that's owned by the Queen. You can sort of go there and play, right? You know, hunt, fish, camp, stuff like that. Uh, certain rules you have to follow when you're on that land, but anyway. Um, so, uh, I was reviewing my options for uh, how to get down this road, and of course the, uh, you know, the ATV is the, the most logical thing, but they don't, you know, like, basically, you either buy a brand new one, which are expensive, or you buy a used one and you don't know how reliable it is, and I'm not like, you know, I've not spent years working on bikes and small engines and stuff like that. I, I, I basically know the typical dad stuff, or what, you know, if you want to put it that way, right? Uh, but I really don't know, uh, I'm not an expert on, on engines or small engines or anything like that. Uh, so I don't have the confidence to take some, you know, $2,000 old beater back here. Plus, when you get those things, ATVs, you got to have a vehicle that will pull it, or a vehicle that, you know, you got a trailer, or you got to be able to put it on your vehicle, you need a pickup truck, all this, it gets very expensive. You got a place to store it, right? It just gets uh, a little over the top, figuring all that out. And, uh, you know, you can do that, and that's a great option, but uh, for me, uh, it made sense to just buy, um, I was looking at buying a Rokon, uh, because that's like the ultimate off-road vehicle, and uh, there's none here where I live in Nova Scotia, you have to ship them in, there's very few left in Canada, it just got really complicated, and, uh, and then I just came across, uh, someone suggested to me, why don't you check out the Honda Ruckus, a lot of guys take those off-road, they're not like dirt bikes or anything like that, but you can use them to get down you know, reasonable spots with, just, you know, there's a couple bad spots on this logging road where I just sort of waddle my way through and I'll, I'll show you. I'm going to take you along for a ride here. Um, but, uh, but other than that, um, you know, and there's some places where you got to slow down and take it easy. Uh, but you know, I'll take it for a little drive and then give you my impressions on it, okay? Um, I've got, you know, all the typical uh, gear you need. I got, you know, a, a helmet and I got can't see under here, but I got sort of like a body armor. It's got elbow pads and shoulder pads and all that sort of stuff. That seemed like the best option for something to wear. Can you, you can just put it under your clothes, whether you're in the summer or in the winter or you know, not the winter, but you know, hunting season, that sort of thing. Seem more versatile, just armor you put underneath you. It's got a big thing on the back, shoulder pads, elbow pads, chads in the, the pads in the chest. So, uh, so that's what I went with. So let's, uh, let's go for a ride. I should show you uh, how I've got this thing uh, set up and this is based on me watching guys on YouTube use these things So I've got my backpack in the front here. I mean you would never want to be on the The highway or the road or anything like that with one of these doing that But I'm driving like 10 kilometers an hour <laughs> No faster than that usually slower than that. That's sort of like when I open it up Maybe I'm doing 15 kilometers. I'm going very slow on this road most of the time like 5k or less And I got my feet sort of ready to ready to put them down for stability. Because of my height, I sort of have to have my feet on the outside a little bit anyway, um, uh, just because of uh, it's hard to sort of get them in behind this, because I'm six foot four, this is a bit small for me. Um, but uh, anyway, I just got the backpack sort of strapped on like that. That keeps the weight centered. Uh, I'm like 215 pounds, and uh, really the suspension on, I'm, I'm, I'm pushing this thing to its limit in terms of the suspension, so I can't ride it too hard, I have to be easy on it. Uh, at least that's from the couple times. I've only driven this a couple times so far. Uh, so you're really, you know, with me from the beginning here. But uh, I'm hoping this will op open up a lot of opportunities me, for me for adventures and that sort of thing. So let's uh, get this camera set up and uh, go for a ride.
I'm going about 20 kph right now. It's about as fast as I want to go on this. Just with the suspension the way it is, uh, I can just feel... It's not bottoming out on, on everything, but any, any serious rock, I can actually feel it. You can see the road here isn't that bad. It's a pretty good road at this stage anyway. You'll know when it's bad because I slow down. I slow way down. <laughs> Just going to switch sides here. Yeah. There we go. This side looks better. I wouldn't want to put this in a bad rut, that's for sure. You know, you can sort of feel it. It's not, it is not a dirt bike. I can't stress that enough. starting to get into a bad spot here so this is a spot here I'm gonna slow down and just take it easy and for those of you seasoned dirt bikers or whatever you might accuse me of being some sort of wimp or whatever but I don't care it's my body it's my life I'm gonna go slow through here this is so dodgy I think I'm gonna walk it I'm gonna get up on this hump if I can It does not want to go up on the hump. All right, we'll just go through here. No problem. Yeah, so it does not handle ruts well. It won't come out of the rut. Maybe at some speed it will. But at this speed, <laughs> at slow speeds, it will not come out of a rut. And from this point onward, the road's pretty pretty crappy very ruddy a lot of ruts and wet everything's wet and muddy and greasy and these tires have no traction at all I think if I could find some sort of chains or something like that to put on I think it make a huge difference this thing just wants to slide all over the place I want to get up here maybe yeah see it it does not like the ruts. Where is the best track? I mean, you can just waddle. That's an option. I think, it's, I think it's better over here. Yeah, this is better. You can waddle, that's an option. Won't get stuck, it's too light. Now you just take it easy and take your time. Don't take any risks. It's my opinion. 
You're out here by yourself in the middle of nowhere. This is rural Nova Scotia. I fell down off this bike and was unconscious. People, no one, people, I mean, it's almost deer season, so there's probably some, uh, it's not deer season yet. There's probably some muzzle loader guys in the woods right now. Um, but uh, maybe, maybe not down this road, right? Really, it's a crapshoot. This is Nova Scotia. We don't have a large population, and if you're on a logging road in the rural part of the province, uh, you might not see anybody for days or weeks or more. So uh, you have to be careful when you're by yourself. Uh, I got a cell phone, right? But that's basically the only backup I've got is the phone. Okay, this is a lousy spot here. Kind of ruddy. Whoa. Yeah. There's an even worse spot up here. I know this road, that's why I'm sort of narrating this. Much worse spot up here where I, I cannot get my... Uh... So everything that we've gone through before, if I'm very careful, I can get my Honda Pilot through, which doesn't have the best uh, clearance. But this spot, it may look okay, but this is, this is as soft as pudding here. And there's no shoulder on either side to get up on. Basically, it's just a big rut and a big rut. Uh, with an ATV, but not a big deal. But uh, with a, just an SUV or a pickup truck or whatever, you just don't have it. All right, we got through that. Okay, we got through it. Perfect. Uh, again, I'm still being very careful because there's just so many ruts here. It's just kind of a ridiculous trail. The main thing you have to be ready to do is to take to let off the throttle of anything weird. If you feel like you're losing control, you know, hit the brakes, take your hand off the throttle. Get it back under control. Do not accelerate. Gonna walk it through this. Now the rut has the more even ground, but you can't steer left or right. It's, you're just much more likely to tip the thing in the rut. <laughs> so I'm going down the center here to avoid that rut because it's a deep rut and uh, I can't, the wheels on this, just because of their size, I guess, they can't steer their way out of it. They just stay in it. It's just the rear wheel does not follow the front wheel. Yeah, not bad though, not bad at all. And you can see we're getting to a part of the road that, uh, you know, doesn't even look like a road, but it's at some point in time, this was a regularly graded logging road. And now it's just, uh, it's, it's, it's still a logging road, but uh, the province or the crown doesn't maintain it anymore. I'm going slow here just because this looks a bit dodgy. So I'm just walking my way through in the friction zone, as they call it. That feels right. When I'm doing this sort of stuff, I never let fear stop me from trying things, but I do let fear tell me what to do. That is to say, I, I listen to it. If something feels wrong, uh, slow down, stop, think, <laughs> right? Don't let fear rule your life, but listen to it, learn from it, use it as a thermometer for risk because your your brain's pretty good at you know knowing when you're at risk well, the road's pretty crappy here but it's definitely doable even with these factory tires whoa 
let's just slow down there and walk a little bit there walk her through another lousy spot here don't know how deep this is just walk her through lousy here. I'm going to try taking it over in the shoulder here. See what this is like. Uh, it's equally unpredictable gotta say not great Right, that's as far as I want to go down this road that's about four kilometers that's where I wanted to go of course I could walk it but uh, if you're carrying gear and you're doing uh, you know if I basically come this far in 
to do physical things this far in. So I want all the energy in my legs. <laughs> right? I want to save it all for when I'm actually in the woods, whether I'm, you know, uh, got my hip waders on and I'm fly fishing down the river, or whether I'm walking around, uh, you know, hunting and stuff like that. Um, you know, I don't want to burn up my energy carrying a, a backpack in, right? I want my, all my energy for what I do here. You know, 10 years ago, this was not something I even thought about. I just carried everything in 20 years ago. But, uh, you know, at 49, unless you're an exceptional human being or a better man than me, um, yeah, you know, you're, there's just limits to uh, what, you, what you've got in the tank in terms of, it's not necessarily the, the stamina, it's more the wear and tear on your joints and muscles and stuff like that. You just feel it. Uh, and there's really not a lot you can do to increase your joints ability or your back's ability to take uh, to take it really there's you know yoga and to do some things like that to, I mean I, there's a routine I do every morning to sort of keep myself keep myself going but I can't unage myself and I can't uninjury uninjure old injuries so this is my solution so let's have a look at this bike here uh, so I noticed when I was driving in the kickstand if I got a more, if I got too too much into one of those deeper ruts the kickstand would grab the rut. You know, the kickstand's up here like this. The kickstand is almost just slightly lower than the um, kickstart here. Um, but it, it sort of, it, it sort of sticks forward a little bit. So it, it grabs, but you know, it never, it's not like it hauled me off my bike or anything like that. Basically anything that was dodgy, I slowed down and took my time. All right, you can see this thing, if you look at its construction, there's hoses and pipes and things like this. It is not built for this sort of terrain. Right, I'll have to give it a good wash uh, when I get home, right? I mean, it just happens to be muddy today because it's been raining all the time. So uh, you just have to, you know, act accordingly in terms of maintaining the bike. But I mean, it got me here despite some really, you know, crappy road. So uh, totally works. Uh, there are parts at uh, times where um, I could feel this, you know, bottom out, but I'm, I am 218 or 250, what is it? I think as of yesterday, I was 213, <laughs> right? So. Um, you know, I, I imagine if I'd had the backpack, which probably weighs, I probably got about 25 pounds worth of stuff in here. If I had it, you know, if you pack it just right, you can stash it into the seat, or if I'd strapped it on back here somehow. And there's aftermarket racks you can buy for these as well, right? But if I did any of that, it would have just put more weight here. Um, so, uh, it's actually not that bad. Like, you can't, if I was going faster and harder, um, I'd have to have a, a, an upgrade to the shock. But it seemed to handle things okay, actually. And um, I mean, I'm not opposed to losing 10 pounds. That probably wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. Uh, so uh, if I could lose 10 pounds, that's a good goal for the winter months. Um, and just store things forward. Uh, this system works totally fine. I'm totally happy with uh, this, uh, this uh, Honda Ruckus as a, uh, a means to access uh, logging roads. Under 5,000 bucks to buy. Uh, the only catch I would say if you're thinking about doing this is uh, depending on where you live, there's different rules about uh, you know how to get it licensed and all that sort of stuff. So there are some provinces in Canada where you buy one of these and, and it's basically viewed like a bicycle. You just get on it and drive. <laughs> yeah, there's other ones where you'd have to put, uh, like where I live, Nova Scotia, you actually have to get it registered and you have to get a plate and a permit and everything. It considers this a road vehicle. Um, so then you have to get a plate, even though it's 49cc. In Nova Scotia, um, I had to get a plate, permit, and a motorcycle license. I had to take a motorcycle course because uh, it takes a, you know, it's very, uh, it, it, it takes a lot longer to just go and get tested and stuff like that. If you take the course, it costs money, but it, everything just happens a lot quicker. <laughs> <laughs> Let's put it that way. Um, so I had to do all of that. Um, so that that cost a bit of money, but it was still cheaper than an ATV or, you know, changing my four thousand dollar used vehicle out for something more expensive. It's still, you know, this still ended up being a cheap way to get out in the woods on logging roads without burning up my energy. Um, this here thing all in, I think, was forty eight hundred dollars, and that's brand new. If you bought it used, I'm sure you could get them for a lot less. I just wanted, you know, I wanted it to be completely reliable. I didn't want it, there to be any question marks about the condition of it. I just bought it brand new. Um, you know, I was thinking about getting something bigger and heavier, but I went back with this and decided to try this for a few years and see how it works. So just to sum up, I'm happy with this thing. Um, if I were to change it at all, I would get maybe uh, more, uh, 
more powerful uh, rear shocks and uh, definitely uh, more grippy tires. I'm gonna look for um, tire chains and things like that, something to put on it to give it more traction because that was definitely today with everything being muddy and greasy and this is all clay here. Um, it was uh, dodgy to drive it. I had to be very careful um, because it just sort of slipped around because these factory tires are not, they have some tread, but they're not like, they're not off-road tires, <laughs> right? Clearly they're not off-road tires, <laughs> but they do have some tread and they're kind of fat, right? So, you know, I thought that's why people use them this way. All right, so I hope you found that interesting. If you did, please like, share, subscribe, and until next time, enjoy the outdoors on the cheap. Thanks for watching. Thank you.